In this video, I want to do an example where we need to find the constant c such that uh, the, this, this function is a PDF. All right, and I'm particularly I chose this example because it has this funky support. Okay, so this support is something that we need to carefully think through as we're trying to integrate over f. Um, so we want to be careful about this. Okay, so in order for f to be a, a PDF, then the integral of f of x or f of x and y. Um, dx dy, which is the same thing as dy dx, doesn't matter the order of your integration, but the total integral must equal 1. Okay, so the integral of cx minus y dx dy must equal 1. Uh, we could divide both sides by c and we would get the integral of x minus y dx dy must equal 1 over c. Right? We can pull out c because it's just a constant there. Okay, So what we want to do is we want to figure out what is this integral. This is the goal, to figure out what is this integral. Okay, In order to figure out what that integral is, I'm missing right now, I'm missing my bounds. So I need to figure out what the bounds are. Um, so f, so Technically, the bounds are negative infinity to infinity, right? Negative infinity to infinity. Um, but f, it's, it's zero unless uh, this support is, is true, right? So unless um, y is greater than zero, less than x, and x is more than y and less than two. All right, so uh, everywhere else, the integral is zero because f would just be zero. All right. So usually, uh, when I have one-dimensional um, PDFs, I start by graphing my PDF. Okay, and then I can tell where my bounds are. Um, when you have two-dimensional PDFs, or sorry, you have uh, two random variables x and y, then when you graph your value of f, then you have a three-dimensional graph. Actually, I can show you what this one looks like. Actually, I've done it here. I've graphed it. So um, you see that the height is zero unless, so this is, the, this is the height and this is the value of the function, and the height is zero until you get to this uh, point where um, you know x is more than y, uh, and x and y are both between 0 and 2, okay? So this is the three-dimensional graph. Um, we have x and y. So this is using a graphing tool, um, ac Academo, all right? It's actually really cool. You can play around with this online. All right, so anyway, um, since it's a three-dimensional graph, I'm not going to draw that here. Rather, I'm just going to focus on the support. I'm only going to graph the support now. Okay, so for two-dimensional, um, so when I have two random variables, I'm going to focus on just graphing the support. And by graphing the support, really what I'm doing is I'm graphing the where the value, where f is not equal to zero. Okay, so, so this is y and this is x. Okay, so where f is not equal to zero. So it's not equal to zero uh, if y is between zero and x. Okay, so y must be more than zero. That means it must be in this quadrant here. It can't be down here where y is negative. Okay, and um, let's go ahead and draw the line for x equals y. So this is x equals y or y equals x, same thing. Okay, and so y it must be less than whatever x is. So that means y is less than x, right? So if x is 1 half, y is less than 1 half, right? So y is less. All right, then x actually, x can go at most to 2. X can go at most to 2, actually, strictly less than 2. So that means y is also strictly less than 2. So where these two meet up, there they are. All right, so this here, this is my support. All right, and if we look back at that 3D graph that I just showed, um, the values of f, there, there are non-zero only in this area, right? Only where um, y is less than x, okay? And y and x are both between zero and two.
All right, so now when I'm looking at my integration bounds, I'm gonna look at this graph. So I think it's a little easier to look at this graph. So starting with the inner, okay, you always start with the inside and you think about where X, so if I have DX here, then I need to th think about the restrictions for X. If you had done it dy dx, then you would first think about y, okay? So however you set your, your integral, start with the inside, okay? So what is x between x? So I'm going to use red for that. The values of x go from whatever y is all the way until 2, right? So you see that values of x goes from whatever y is until you get to 2, okay? You see x is between y and 2. So I'm going to go ahead and write that. Uh, it goes from y to 2. y to 2. All right, so now x is already, we're going to integrate with only in this area. So then when I'm considering y, the values of y, so I'll have to pick a different color, purple or blue. Um, so now what is y? So y can go from zero all the way until two because y is already we're, we're already restricted to this to this area I have the red lines by the first integral okay so if I go from if I have y going from zero to two then it does it doesn't go in it doesn't go up here because we have x is later just being integrated from y to 2, okay? So, I'm going to erase that. So the way we set up our integral is, first thing you want to do is you want to consider the inner and think about that variable, okay? So this was x first, and then where is x restricted to, okay? And then secondly, you want to think about the, the outer variable. And the outer variable is going to cover the outer range of the support, okay? So zero to two, because because x already has, x has already been limited, so then y can go from zero to two, all right? Start with the inner, then go to the outer. All right, so let's go ahead and do this integration, and, um, and so from here on out, it's just pretty much calculus, so let's go ahead and solve this. So starting, with integrating x, okay? So I still have zero to two, and I still have my dy out here, equals one over c. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna integrate x. So bring the power of x up one, okay? This has, the second term y has no x, so now it will, right? Just as, it's just a constant, so you just add the value x there. And then we're gonna integrate it from, the bounds are y to two, okay? All right, so then I'm gonna go ahead and plug in those bounds. First, plugging in two. Now remember, since we just integrated with regards to x, I'm plugging in two for x, okay? So this would be two squared minus two y, okay? Then I'm gonna plug in y for x. So one half y squared minus y, y times y is y squared, right? Okay, dy equals 1 over c. I right, go ahead and simplify this a little bit. So, oh, I could do this in my head. So I have 1 half times 2 squared, so that's basically 1 half times 4, so that's 2. This is 2y. This is minus, so this would be negative 1 half y squared. Negative and a negative makes a positive, so plus 1 half y squared dy equals 1 over c. All right, so let's go ahead and integrate with regards to z, c, or with regards to y. So that'd be 2y equals, bring the power of y up 1, then 2 and 2 cancel, plus bring the power of y up 1, so that'd be 3, so this would have to be 6 on the bottom here, from 0 to 2. All right, so go ahead and plug in your bounds. So I'll have two times two minus, minus two squared plus one six, two to the third power, should have wrote two there. Minus, if you plug in zero, all of these are zero. 
All right, so this is four minus four, so that, that cancels basically. And this is eight over six. All right, so eight over six is the same thing as four over three. All right, figure out what C is, go ahead and flip both sides. So we get C equals 3 fourths. So this function F is a PDF when you have written 3 fourths right here. So instead of C, now this is 3 fourths. Now F is a PDF.